SOFC fuel cells are manufactured partly at Risu National Laboratory in Roskilde, partly at Topsu fuel cell in Lyngby, where the cells are assembled with other components to form a fuel cell stack. The cells consist of ceramics. Ceramic powder is mixed with a number of other components in ball mills to get a uniform thick paste. The paste is cast in long, thin sheets, which are only a quarter of a millimeter thick. These sheets eventually provide the high mechanical strength of the cells. Subsequently, the active anode and the SOFC electrolyte are applied by use of spraying. The cells are then cut to the desired size and fired at a high temperature in order to sinter the ceramic particles together. Finally, the cells are tested for gas leaks. The cathode layer is applied to the gas-tight cells and then the cells are sintered again at a high temperature. Subsequently, a contact layer is applied. This ensures electrical contact between the cells. This layer is printed onto the cells like a screen print. The fuel cells are then cut to the final size by use of an advanced laser cutting technique and then they are ready for use. At Topsur fuel cell, the cells are stacked alternately with metallic interconnects. 50 to 75 cells and a corresponding number of interconnects are required to get a fuel cell stack with an electrical output of 1 kilowatt. Pipes for supply of fuel and air and pipes for removal of water and CO2 are mounted on the stack together with two power outlets. After assembly of the stack, its components are activated at a high temperature. Now the stack is finished. It is then tested to confirm performance before it is shipped to a customer or used for research and development purposes at tops of a fuel cell. It is not possible with the naked eye to see how a fuel cell stack produces power. However, this little test shows the working principle. When the fuel cell is heated to a high temperature in a gas flame, it uses the non-combusted gases in the center of the flame as fuel and starts producing electricity which makes the propeller rotate. SOFC fuel cells can be applied for power and heat production for residential homes where they would substitute the traditional natural gas or oil-fired boiler. The family consumes most energy in the morning and in the evening when they're at home. An average Danish family with two adults and two children consumes yearly about 25,000 kilowatts of electricity and heat. With the Danish utility prices, this corresponds to an annual expense of about 3,100 euro. An SOFC fuel cell is an environmentally friendly alternative to a natural gas or oil-fired boiler. SOFC fuel cells will run on natural gas, gasified biomass or other fuels. The fuel cell converts the fuel to electricity and heat, which are both used in the house. An SOFC fuel cell is very energy efficient and environmentally friendly. The heart in the SOFC fuel cell is the fuel cell stack. This consists of 50 to 100 ceramic fuel cells, which are stacked on top of each other. Each cell is only one-third of a millimeter thick. Metallic interconnects are placed between each cell to ensure electric contact between the cells and to distribute air and fuel to all cells. During the night, no or only little electricity is used. However, the fuel cell keeps running and provides heat for the family. The power which is produced and not used by the family is exported to the central power grid. The family is paid for the energy it is exporting to the electricity grid. In the future, the family will hopefully receive a very good compensation since the electricity is produced in an environmentally friendly way. SOFC fuel cells is an environmentally friendly and energy efficient way to produce electricity and heat for private homes. This is due to the high efficiency of the fuel cells and because no energy is lost in the power grid and central heating pipes between the power plant and the home. By use of SOFC fuel cells, an average family can save about 350 euros per year on its expenses for electricity and heat. For gas stations, data warehouses, hotels, hospitals and supermarkets, it is important to have a reliable power supply all the time. With an SOFC fuel cell, power outages can be prevented. SOFC fuel cells produce power from natural gas, gasified biomass and other types of fuel. This means that it can work independently of the central power grid. By having an SOFC fuel cell supply the power, the supermarket can prevent its food from going bad in case fridges and freezers are without power. Hotels and gas stations will not have to cease operating because the computers and the cash register are without power. In addition to the high reliability, SOFC fuel cell is an energy efficient and environmentally friendly technology for the production of electricity.
SOFC fuel cells have great advantages if used as electricity supply for trucks. During long hauls, the driver must stop to rest. And then he makes use of the truck's many facilities, TV, computer, coffee maker, air conditioning and other appliances. Sometimes it is also required to keep the cargo cold. All these uses demand power in excess of what the battery can supply. The consequence is that many trucks idle and let the truck's diesel engine supply the power via the generator. Idling diesel engines are a source of massive air pollution in North America and in Europe. In the US alone, 3.8 billion litres of diesel is yearly consumed by idling trucks. With the same amount of diesel, a truck could run 11 billion kilometres or 250,000 times around the Earth. At the same time, 11 billion tonnes of CO2 and 180,000 tonnes of nitrogen oxides are emitted. This is about 10 times the CO2 emission of a medium-sized coal-based power plant. A solution to this massive environmental problem is to equip the trucks with an SOFC fuel cell. When the truck is standing still for long periods, the engine is turned off and the fuel cell is started. The fuel cell converts diesel to power, and this conversion is much more efficient than with the diesel engine. If all large trucks in the US used SOFC fuel cells, instead of letting their engine idle, 2.5 billion liters of diesel could be saved annually. At the same time, the polluting emissions would be reduced by two-thirds. To understand how a fuel cell works, you have to look inside the cell. The fuel cell combines three separate functions. First, air is passed through an electrode chamber, the cathode, where oxygen from the air is charged with electrons to form oxygen ions. Next, the charged oxygen flows to the other electrode, the anode, where it reacts with a fuel gas, for instance as here with hydrogen. But it could also be natural gas or biogas. The transport occurs through the electrolyte. The electrolyte works as a one-way ticket. The charged oxygen can travel in one direction. But the opposite direction is closed. The electrolyte is very thin, only about a hundredth of a millimetre. The charged oxygen can therefore easily travel across to the hydrogen fuel gas, where the atoms react to water, H2O. Left over will be the excess electrons from the charged oxygen. They will try to return to their origin, the cathode. But since the electrolyte blocks the way, they will have to travel in a wire. And electrons travelling in a wire, that is current. 